Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Jakarta. How are you today? How was your flight? Is it good? First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Yoselin Setiawan. You can call me Selin. And I'm not alone today. I'm with my partner, Ega and Jason from Citra Tour and Travel. Before we start, please change your watch to the local time Indonesia. Indonesian time is GMT plus 7. So, it's 12 o'clock. Indonesia have two seasons. There are summer and rainy. Since we are in rainy, don't forget to bring your umbrella or raincoat. So, are you ready to start traveling? Okay, after we lunch, we will head to Cikini area. Let me tell you an information about Jakarta and Indonesia while heading to Cikini, okay? So, Indonesia is an archipelago which is Indonesia have more than 17 more islands. Wow! Indonesia have five big islands like Sumatra, Java, Celebes, Borneo, and Papua. Indonesia is a republic country led by president and vice president. For the current period, Indonesia is led by Mr. Joko Widodo as a president and Mr. Maruf Amin as a vice president. The red and white flag is the flag of Indonesia, which means red symbolizes courage, white symbolizes purity. The capital city of Indonesia is Jakarta. And now we are in Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. Has anyone been to Jakarta before? Okay, now we are in Cikini area, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome! In the Dutch era, the Cikini area became the famous tourist destination, you know. Cikini Zoo is the center of attention in this area. It is said that before the Ismail Marzuki Park, building was built. The land was used as the Chikini Zoo since 1864. Were you half born? Not yet, right? <laughs> Ismail Marzuki Park is an art, cultural, and science center. Ismail Marzuki Park complex comprises a number of facilities including six performances like art theater, exhibition hall, cinema, gallery, libraries, and archive building. Inside Ismail Marzuki Park, there is also have a planetarium. In here, we can learn together about the planets in outer space. Besides Ismail Marzuki Park, Cikini also has several museums, such as Zhuang Patlima Museum, Museum for the Formulation of the Proclamation Text. For two museums, will be continued by my partner, Ega and Jason. Thank you, and enjoy the tour. Thank you, Yoselin. So, what do you think? Is this interesting? If you're interesting, please raise your hand. <laughs> okay. So, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Jason Fernando. You can call me Jason. So, now we are going to Joang 45 Museum. While heading to Joang 45 Museum, do you know guys Indonesian currency? Indonesian currency is rupiah. There are two Indonesian money, paper money and coins. 100,000 rupiah is the largest money. You can buy sling bag or watch at mall. 50,000 rupiah you can use to buy fast food like McDonald's, KFC, AW, etc. 20,000 rupiah you can use to buy traditional food like ketoprak, gado gado, and the others. 10,000 you can use to buy traditional cake like kue chubit. 5,000 rupiah you can use to buy traditional drink like liang teh, es buah. 2,000 rupiah you can use to pay public toilet. And coins we can use to give to busker. And now we we'll talk about Joang 45 Museum. This museum was inaugurated in 1974 by President Suharto. Before being inaugurated, this museum used to be a hotel owned by L.C. Somper during the Dutch colonial period. After that, during the Japanese colonial period, the hotel was converted into an office. 
In this office, political education was held. In this museum can be seen traces of the struggle for in the independence of the Republic of Indonesia with a collection of relics of the Indonesian fighter. Among them, there are official cards of first president and vice president of the Republic of Indonesia known as REP1 and REP2 and the Chikini bombing incident car. In addition, there is also a collection of documentary photographs, paintings, and dioramas depicting the struggle around the years 1945 until 1950s. Facilities available for visitors to the Joang 45 Museum are First, they have the permanent and temporary exhibition room with multimedia corner. Second, they have the Joang 45 Cinema, a studio showing documentaries and old struggle films. Third, they have the scientific history reference library, equipped with struggle comics for children's reading. Fourth, they have the children's room, a special space for children's creativity is equipped with hero computer games, coloring, puzzles, and knockdown games. Fifth, they have the photo studio. It provides costumes of the fighters for visitors to wear and instant photos. Sixth, they have the souvenir shop. And last but not least, they have the plaza for outdoor activities in the form of children's theater. So, are you curious guys? Who can't wait to come here, raise your hand, ha ha ha. Okay, now we have arrived at the Museum Joang 45. Before we start, please double check your language. Hi ladies and gentlemen, so what do you think about the Joang 45 Museum? Interesting, right? My name is Ega Bernoldi, you can call me Ega. Okay, are you still excited? Now we go to the museum of the formulation of the text of the proclamation. So guys, now look on your left. There are students wearing school uniforms, right? Pay attention to me. In Indonesia, students wear uniforms is also different from elementary school, junior high school to high school. In elementary school, students wear white shirts with red pants or skirts. Junior high school wears a white shirt, top, and blue shirts or pants. And senior high school students wear white shirts with gray pants or skirts. There are two types of school in Indonesia, public schools and private schools. Public schools are free of charge and these schools were built by the government to educate underprivileged students, while the private school was created by a foundation and paid. Formulation of the proclamation text. Do you know what the proclamation is? The proclamation is the official statement of the Indonesian nation about independence and freedom from the cycles of colonialism. The formulation of the proclamation text museum is a history museum in Jakarta, Indonesia. The building is where the proclamation of Indonesian independence was formulated. The building was built in 1922 following the design of Jeff L. Bertsburg in 1931. The building was bought by insurance company in Nijmich during the Japanese occupation of the Dutch and this, the building became the residence of Rear Admiral Tadashi Maeda until the arrival of the aliens in the Indonesia in September 1945 when the building was used by the British as the military HQ. The building was retained by the English Embassy from 1961 until 1988. Building was given to the Indonesian Department of Education and Culture on December 21, 1981. 1982, the building used the National Library Indonesia as an office building. Because of the role of the building in the formulation of the Independence Proclamation Tax, in 1984, Minister of Education and Culture Nugroho Nusantoto directed that it be converted into a museum. The official inauguration of the Museum of the Formulation of Proclamation Text Museum was on November 24, 1922. The museum is divided into four sections containing items related to the formulation of the proclamation text. Most of the furniture is replica because the building changed hands several times. The museum display 
wax sculpture of historic figures as well as photos and records. Okay, we have arrived at the museum of the formulation of the text of the proclamation. Enjoy! I'm very happy to meet you here. Maybe we can only accompany you today. Me, your Celine and Jason, thank you and forgive me if there are any misspellings of words. See you next time. Bye-bye.